accounting for receivables, in particular accounting for bad debts. So here we'll just have a quick overview of accounting for bad debts. You have two major choices for accounting for bad debts. There is the direct write-off method for accounting for bad debts. And in the direct write-off method, you account for the debt when you write it off and you do nothing else. Or there is the allowance method. What is the allowance method? You make an allowance for potential bad debts. These can happen in one of two ways. You can use the percentage of sales method to make your allowance, or you can aid your accounts receivable to make your allowance. Let's have a look at these each in a little more detail. The percentage of sales method, probably better known as the percentage of credit sales method, um, it's based on your revenue statement and what do you do? You estimate what uh, you're going to add to your current allowance for bad debts. So it's really an estimate of your bad debt expense for the month or whatever period you're looking at. The aging of receivables method, it's also referred to as a balance sheet method and what it estimates is your allowance, your total allowance for bad debts. So your revenue statement estimates how much um, bad debts you add to your allowance each month and the balance sheet method looks at what your current balance is. Let's look at each of these in a little bit more detail of how they happen. I'll firstly look at the percentage of sales method. So again remind you this is also known as the revenue uh, statement method and it estimates what you add to your current allowance for bad debts. So how do you do that? Well, we calculate your current credit sales for the month and make sure that's adjusted for any items that have been returned. So they are just looking at your net credit sales. You multiply this by your expected bad debt percentage. So if you had $100 sales in a month, you expect to have 2% uh, will ultimately result in bad debts. You multiply the $100 worth of credit sales after allowing for adjustments by 2% would give you $2 bad debt expense. So what's that? This will give you how much you need to add to your bad debt allowance and therefore your bad debt expense. So that would give you $2 which would be your bad debt expense and you'd add that to your allowance. Conversely the aging of accounts receivables method um, takes a different approach. It's more likely that this will just happen once a year. So what do you do? Well firstly you need to have a report of your accounts receivable um, but categorised for how long um, the items have been outstanding. So this is what we call an aged account receivable listing. So you calculate what your allowance for bad debt should be by multiplying each of the categories. So what do we mean here categories? You know your current, um, of the, the items that owe to you currently, those that are a month to two months old, 30 to 60 days, then 60 to 90 days, and maybe 90 days plus. So each of those will have a different percentage that you think is collectible. So you apply that percentage to the total amounts owed for each of those categories. And the total of these amounts is the total allowance you have for bad debts. So you add all of these up, that's the total allowance you have for bad debts. So if you have an opening balance of bad debts, then your bad debt expense will just be the increase in this allowance. So let's go back to overview. So when accounting for bad debts, you can either wait till you write the, write the item off and then account for it directly, or you can make, an, when you make a sale or at some other time during the period, you can make an allowance for uh, bad debts. And that can either be based on a percentage of your credit sales or you can look at the money you're owed and make some allocation based on that. Thank you.